protesters once again demonstrated in front of the U.S. Supreme Court today over abortion, three weeks after the justices overturned Roe v. Wade. 17 members of Congress were among those arrested during the protest this afternoon, after U.S. Capitol Police said they blocked traffic outside the court. Since the court's ruling last month, doctors in states with abortion bans have struggled to figure out how to care for patients with high-risk pregnancies, including miscarriages. The Department of Health and Human Services put out new guidance last week saying any state ban is preempted by federal law, protecting abortions as part of emergency care. But medical providers are still concerned they could be prosecuted for performing some procedures. Joining me now is Dr. David Hackney. He is a maternal fetal medicine specialist based in Ohio. Dr. Hackney, welcome to the News Hour. I think it's fair to say the last few weeks have made clear there are a number of doctors who are confused or scared about what they can or can't do in this new reality we are when they're caring for pregnant patients. That federal guidance I just laid out, is that clear to you? Do you have a clear understanding of what you can and cannot do? It, it does help, and we certainly appreciate everything that the department is doing in that regards. However, it doesn't solve many of the, many of the problems that we have, which are specific um, to the state which we're in now. Unfortunately, some things are very clear in the state of Ohio. We cannot perform abortions for fetal genetic anomalies, uh, fetal uh, birth, birth defects, even those in which we know that the child would not survive. And we also cannot perform abortions solely because the pregnancy was conceived by rape. Um, that is very straightforward, in my opinion. That is um, very, very tragic. The other main category in which we sometimes get involved in abortion care is cases in which it's needed to either save the mother's life or on behalf of the mother's health. And this is where there's still a lot of things which are not clear. In Ohio, the law does call out some specific cases. So if there's uh, pre-viable premature membranes uh, break breaking the uh, bag of water, or if mom has preeclampsia that is spelled out. But a lot of things are very much um, less clear, and there's a lot of fear among OBGYNs who don't know when we could proceed on behalf of mother's health or not. So what does that mean for your patients? I mean, if you have a pregnant patient come in today, you detect a, a lethal anomaly, what do you say to your patient? What kind of care can you provide? What I try to do first is I try to talk to them as if the law hasn't changed and try to come up with them with what would work the best for them. You know, there are patients who are diagnosed with lethal birth defects who do choose to continue to move forward. And we do certainly always support those pa patients if that's what works best for them. So what my own approach has been the last couple of weeks is I just try to talk to the patient. I say, pretend that the laws didn't change and let's figure out first what would work best for you. Unfortunately, for most patients in the setting of a lethal birth defect, they choose not to move forward. And this is where I now have to tell the pa patient that they cannot receive an abortion in the state. We are still allowed to speak free freely. We are still allowed to refer out of state. So, you know, we will start to try to, to do that. But there is the potential for a patient with a lethal birth defect who will not be able to leave the state of Ohio and would be forced to continue to term against their will, which I just cannot imagine what a night nightmare that would be. What's the risk for that patient in a situation like that? Well, um, even if the patient is completely he healthy, so sometimes um, we have a case where all of the concerns are fetal, mom is in totally good health, just even a completely normal, healthy pre pregnancy always carries risk. And the risk of the pregnancy, which continues to term, is always greater than the risk of um, an abor abortion procedure in the first trimester, or even the se second, too. You know, in high-risk obstetrics, all the time, we see completely healthy patients where everything is going well, and then they go to deliver, and there's hemorrhage or a blood clot in, it, in, in the lung. And we know that things along those lines can occur. I can't imagine if there was a patient who had a lethal fetal disorder was forced to continue the pregnancy to term against their will, and then had something terrible happen when they went to the liver. That would just be a tragedy with no be benefits at all. Dr. Hackney, let me ask you about this new landscape we're in, because it's clear that there are 
legal voices watching. We've seen attorney generals uh, weigh in on some of these cases. Attorney general in your, in your neighboring state of Indiana even threatened to go after a doctor who did provide a legal abortion service in one case. I'm curious what it feels like to try to do your job in this climate, what you're feeling and experiencing, what other doctors are telling you they're worried about. There is a lot of fear. I myself was on call the very first night that the law changed. You know, I got a text from friends on a Friday night saying that it had gone into effect. And I do high risk obstetrics. I was going to be rounding in the hospital Saturday and Sunday, and I didn't know what to do. You know, what if I came in Saturday and there was a pa patient who was bleeding or someone who was going into to heart failure? And there's still a lot of gray zones where we're not exactly sure what the best thing is to do. You know, it sounds, Dr. Hackney, like there's a lot you don't know. I've heard you say uncertain a, a, a lot of times. We're in a new legal landscape. And one, I should mention, you have argued against. So what is it that you want to see from state leaders or from federal leaders that you think would help you to better care for and protect your patients? Well, the biggest thing I would want to see is for the Ohio State Supreme Court to stop this law, to stop SB 23. You know, we're talking about raped children. We are talking about pregnancies where there's a lethal birth effect, and the woman tragically is going to be forced to continue against her will. The Ohio Supreme Court has the potential power to stop this law. The issue of children at the moment, you know, is very, very unclear. The attorney general should say clearly, you know, which children who have been raped can provide abortion care and which one we cannot. I mean, it's such a horrible topic. You know, I, I don't believe to some extent that we're having to think about this. And this shouldn't have to come from me. You know, as the chair of Kobe Joanne for the state, you know, I, I'm getting a lot of calls. I'm getting a lot of questions. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm looking over the research and data on when do you have physical damage to the body of a raped child. This whole scenario, I have to say, it's unfair. That is Dr. David Hackney, a maternal fetal medicine specialist based in Ohio, joining us tonight. Dr. Hackney, thank you for your time. Thank you.